everyone, welcome back. So today we're gonna go ahead and move on from properties, properties of integers and focus on fractions and decimals. So let's go ahead and start out with fractions. So the first thing you need to know is that fractions are in the form n over d, where numerator, or I'm sorry, where n stands for the numerator and d stands for the denominator. So if I give you the fraction one third, you would say that the top number, which is one, is called the numerator, and the bottom number, three, is called the denominator. So now let's go ahead and talk about something called equivalent fractions. So when you think about the word equivalent, it really just means equal. So in, let's say if I gave you the fraction three ninths, we could say that these two are equal or that one third and three ninths are equal equivalent fractions, equivalent fractions, and that's because they hold the same value. If you were to turn this into a decimal, for example, it would be 0 0.33 repeating, and the same would hold for, for this one over here, you'd get 0 0.33 repeating. Um, so I kind of knew that from experience, but one way to test if they're equivalent is to reduce this fraction here. So let's talk about reducing fractions. So what you want to do when you reduce a fraction is you find the greatest common divisor, GCD, which is equal to greatest common divisor. And you divide it out. So when you really think about it, you're gonna find the largest the greatest common factor between the numerator and the denominator, and then you just divide the numerator and the denominator by it. And that's why it's called the greatest common divisor, because you're gonna divide it out of the numerator and the denominator. So in this case, the greatest common factor of three and nine is three. So I'm gonna divide the numerator by three and I'm gonna divide the denominator by three and I'm gonna get one over three. So now by reducing this fraction, it ends up being one third, which is exactly equal to what is on the left-hand side, which is also one third. So let me go ahead and give you one more example problem to make sure you got that. So if I give you the fraction eight over 36, and I asked you if this was equal to 14 over 63, what would you do? Well, the first thing I would do is I would try to reduce both fractions. So reducing the left-hand side over here to start. Um, first, we need to find the greatest common divisor, which in this case is going to be 4. So we're going to divide the top by 4 and then we're going to divide the bottom by 4. So this is going to become 2 ninths. And we notice that we cannot further simplify this. That's something else to know. If you're not sure what the greatest common divisor is, let's say you have 8 over 36 and you don't know, you can just divide by any number that's a common factor. So I could have divided by 2, and then I would have gotten oops, 16, oh, sorry, dividing, 4 over... 18, but then this can further be reduced because two is, an, two is a factor to both of these as well. So then I'd have to do another step and divide by two again, and then I'd get two over nine. So that's why you wanna divide by the greatest common divisor because it saves you time. But again, you don't have to, if you're not sure what that is, you could just start by pulling out common factors until you've simplified it all the way down and you can't go anymore. So going back to the problem, now for 14 over 63, the greatest common divisor of that is gonna be seven. And seven is gonna go, so let's see, divide by seven, divide by seven. Seven's gonna go into 14 two times, and seven goes into 63 nine times. So here we went ahead and solved it and found that two ninths is equal to two ninths, and therefore these two fractions are equivalent. Okay, so now I'm gonna erase my screen and I want to talk about adding and subtracting fractions and also multiplying and dividing fractions.
Okay, so when we're adding and subtracting fractions, the only thing we really need to worry about is having the same denominator. So if I ask you what one half, oops, if I ask you what one half plus one fourth is, what we first have to do is we have to get the denominators the same. So the easiest way to do that is to multiply this by two over two. And we can do that because two over two is just one. So that means one half is gonna hold its value. So, because if you remember um, when I went over properties of integers, multiplying any number by one just gives you itself. So now over here we have two over four plus one over four and that is going to equal three over four. So let's go over one more example. Uh, so the same thing holds for subtracting. So let's say I have nine over three minus one over six. So again, I can't just subtract these until the denominators are the same. So again, the easiest way to do this is to multiply this fraction by two over two then we're gonna get 18 over six minus one over six, and that is going to give us 17 over six. So one thing I wanna point out, um, sometimes it's not always clear what number you want in the denominator, but you want the denominator to be the least common multiple. So the LCM or least common multiple of the two fractions. And I'm not gonna go into how I'm not gonna go into how to find least common multiple in this video, but I can do subsequent videos if necessary. Just leave me a little note, um, leave a comment, and I don't mind creating one at all. So going back to what I was saying, so now we're left with 17 over six, and I should note that this is called an improper fraction. And that's because the value of the numerator is greater than the value of the denominator. So this is a proper fraction because three is less than four, but this is improper because 17 is greater than six. So why does that matter? Because an improper fraction can also be written as a mixed number. So in order to do that, we essentially just divide. So we're doing 17 divided by six, and that goes in here two times. So we get 12, we subtract and get five. So 17 over six as a mixed number is equal to two and five over six. And this is called a mixed number because it has a whole number, this two, and a fraction. So that's why it's mixed. Whole number and fraction equals mixed number. Okay, so let's talk about how to how to go backwards, so from a mixed number to an improper fraction. So if I have one and seven eighths and I wanna turn this into an improper fraction, you multiply the whole number by the denominator. So you do one times eight, and then you add the numerator, and then you put it over the existing denominator. So in this case, you would get eight plus seven, which is 15 over eight. So let me give you one more example of that. So let's say you have two and two thirds. So we multiply this, this two and the denominator three to get six, and then we add two to get eight. So we do eight over three, and these are equivalent. Why do you do that? Because since you have two holes, this two, so we have two and two thirds, this two, if you give it a denominator of three is equal to six over three, and then you add the two over three, and then you get eight over three. So I hope that explained addition and subtraction. Let's go ahead and talk about multiplication and division. Okay, so with multiplication and division, um, you can essentially just multiply straight across. So if I give you one seventh and I want to multiply that by eight ninths, all we have to do is multiply straight across. So one times eight is eight, seven times nine is 63, and this here is our answer. Let me give you one more example. So let's say you have one over four times eight over, um, let's just say 12. So in this case, we're gonna get eight over 
48. However, if you notice, this is not fully simplified. So in order to simplify this, we'll have to take out, let's take out a four from the top and the bottom. So then we'll get two over 12, and then we can reduce one more time. So let's take out another two, and this is gonna equal one over six. Okay, so going back to the original problem, one way you can avoid having to simplify or the process of simplification is to cross cancel from the beginning. So what that means is I look across at this direction and I'm gonna take out any common terms. So here we have a four and an eight, so I can cross out that four because I can pull out a four, so I'm gonna make it a one and then I'm gonna take out a four from here and I'm gonna make it a two. So all I did was I found the least common multiple of four and eight, which is four. I'm sorry, I found the greatest common factor of four and eight, which is four, and I divided, I divided it out. So from this four, I divided by four to get one. From this eight, I divided by four to get two. So now rewriting this problem, I have one over one times two over 12, and this is gonna equal two over 12, which is equal to one over six. So in this case, we did still end up having to simplify one time, and this will happen sometimes, but a lot of the times if you cross cancel from the beginning, it makes your life a lot easier and you don't have to simplify a bunch. So if I gave you, let's say like nine over 81 times nine over three, in this case, you would definitely want to cross cancel just because it's gonna make your life a lot easier. So here I'd cancel this out, make it a one, cancel that out, make it a three, because again, three was the greatest common factor and I divided it out of both of them. Now going this way, nine and 81, the greatest common factor is nine, cancel that out, make it a one, cancel that out, make it a nine, I end up with three over nine. I have to simplify by a factor of three one more time and I'll get one third and that's my final answer. So again, sometimes you will have to simplify a little bit further, but you're not gonna end up with nearly as big of numbers if you were to just multiply straight across. In this case, you would have gotten 81 over 81 times three, which is, let's see, 243. And see, simplifying that is just not fun. So anyways, I recommend cross-canceling and doing it that way just because it's faster. So now let's talk about division. Luckily, division of fractions isn't too bad. All you wanna do with that is multiply by the reciprocal. So if you have 7 thirds divided by 1 half, all you wanna do is you wanna change this to a multiply and you wanna flip this one around. So, writing this problem out in our new form, we're gonna get 7 thirds times two over one. Now we can just multiply straight across and we get 14 over three, and that's our answer. So let's do one more quick example, and then I think we're pretty much done with dividing fractions. Okay, so if we have one half, let's do one half divided by three. So if you remember, this is a whole number, so we can just put it over one, so now we have one half times one over three. So again, all I did was I changed this to multiply and then I flipped this fraction around. So I'm multiplying by its reciprocal. And now this is gonna equal to one sixth. And that is our final answer. All right, well, I hope that helped. My email is in the description if you'd like to set up any tutoring over Skype or in the Los Angeles area if you are around here. All right, thanks for watching.